Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today to learn more about Intellect QMS 4.0. My name is Peter Hargate, and I'm the CMO and VP of Business Development at Intellect. And joining me today is Tejas Pernik. Tejas, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Hi, this is Tejas. I'm a QMS product manager at Intellect. Um, been with the company for about two and a half years now. And I'm coming from, you know, uh, a medical devices background, so highly regulated industry. So that's in a nutshell about, about me. Okay, great. Thanks, Tejas. All right, well, let's get started. So um, Tejas, can you give us a quick overview of QMS software and why companies should use QMS software? Totally, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, when we talk about QMS software, right, it's all about standardizing the processes. It's all about making sure you are delivering the quality product or process, right? So there are so many different benefits of, you know, implementing a software over you know, pain and paper based systems or manual systems. It's like, you know, you increase your productivity, uh, lower your cost of operations. You also be able to make documents and quality data available to anyone who needs it. Like, you know, in this new normal world, of course, everyone is looking for like, you know, ease of accessing the documents. So that's definitely doable using softwares. Uh, and, you know, talking about some other benefits, uh, you know, it's better communication tool. You can have people log in at the same time and do some collaboration work, making sure your employees are trained on time. Um, some other benefits like, you know, maybe eliminating double data entries. Uh, so, you know, there are many benefits of uh, implementing a QMS software. Um, it's just, it just the scale weighs so more on the software side because you know right now we are what um, you know using a technology and you know it's going so advanced. We you know the, implementing the software would be the best and efficient way for a company to make sure they are delivering quality products, quality processes, and their products are safe and you know uh, safe to use. Excellent. No, I appreciate that. Great. Well, you know, without software in place, yeah, most organizations will face many common challenges. So, you know, some of those can be things like risk of human error, uh, not finding or using the latest improved documentation, uh, and much more. So, you know, all these challenges can lead to poor quality and, like you said, unsafe products and services. Uh, yep. So, with that said, you know, let's let's talk about what we developed here with Intellect QMS 4.0 and our out-of-the-box applications. So, um, you know, it'd be helpful if you could tell us a story about a typical customer. Uh, while walking through some of the core applications that we uh, we offer with Intellect QMS 4.0. Yep, totally, absolutely. So uh, before I take a deep dive and you know log in into the system of QMS 4.0, let me just take a step back and explain you what's QMS 4.0. So what we have done here is we have created a few applications. You know, these applications are quality applications. We have created a few processes out of the box, which can be either implemented directly or they can be configured depending on your business needs. So if we are talking about applications, you know, they come, they range from, you know, document control, employee training, complaints, management, non-conformance, CAPA, supplier management, audit management. So we have a bunch of applications we have designed out of the box. And um, to your point, Peter, yes, let's do like, you know, one full blown application review, uh, maybe like a, a, a thorough demo, and then we can talk about other applications as well. So uh, I hope you guys are seeing my screen. And then, you know, as soon as I log in, since I'm logging in as a designer, meaning I have full access to the system, I see all of these applications which are developed in our database. Like I said, right, which, just, you know, ranges from document control to employee training, deviation, risk, and it goes like further down to validation and verification. So sake of today's discussion, um, I would like to pretty much focus on, you know, complaints management, um, a non-conformance and a CAPA. And the reason I say that, because in our system, in our database, what we have done is we have created the seamless integration within apps. So for example, let's say I'm a medical device company. I get a customer complaint. I document that customer complaint in complaints management. And I see a trend of those complaints for like, let's say, um, you know, two complaints a day, or, you know, the frequency is much more like, let's say five complaints a day. I will go ahead and escalate that complaint to a non-conformance. Now, what system does, what intellect does is it's pretty much copies each and every single information which is documented in complaints to the non-conformance. And then you can also escalate it to Kappa. So typically the flow is like, you know, complaints goes to non-conformance, non-conformance goes to Kappa, 
or you can either directly escalate from components to Kappa. And I'm pretty sure you guys are excited to see it. So let's take a deep dive. Um, let me go ahead and you know open complaints management. And as soon as you open like any of these apps, it's very standard and common layout. Like at the top, you will see all the tabs, which are very specific to you know the, the app which you open. And then I'd write at the bottom, you will see like, you know, the sub content information for those tabs. So for example, in this console, I'm seeing like what's happening on my user login. It's my stats. So it's like a quick snapshot. It's like a scorecard, which is telling you like what's happening for, you know, the complaints I created, how much time I'm taking to complete a complaint, how many complaints I opened, how many closed and total, how many complaints I created in the system. Same thing goes for the different users. And you know you have different score charts as well for your company. So any complaints, you know, by product type, uh, if complaints are escalated to what, like maybe an existing corrective actions or you know any existing non-conformance, and you can also create more charts. This is again all out of the box. This is all configurable. This is all changeable, uh, and you can create like you know more charts and uh, scorecards on it. So let's do this. Um, let me go ahead and create a brand new complaint. So on the, on the top left side, you will always see a, an option called as create new. Now in this case, it's complaint, so it's saying new complaint. So I'll go ahead and click on this new complaint. It's gonna open a page, which is pretty much like a template, right? Now this page will have lots and lots of details to capture like what really went wrong in the field. So right out, right out of the bat, it, you know, you look at complaint record information. It's giving you a complaint ID, who created, when it was created, and you start following, you know, entering some data. So again, like this, since this is a test record, I will go ahead and, you know, uh, have some test data in it, but try to, you know, make it more logical. So let's say description would be uh, a failed uh, or a leaking, let's say a leaking, IV bag, something like that. Let's say I'm a medical device company. I'm, you know, producing IV bags, and you know, this IV bag is pretty much leaking um, in a hospital. So, you know, a complaint came in. What was the circumstance? Like, let's say it's leaks category. Again, all these drop downs are changeable. All these values are changeable. These are just dummy values in our system. And let's say this was, you know, before use, and I was made aware today, which is automatically been set by the system. And then, you know, you can say the failure date was maybe in this case, it was today. Uh, and then you can dump in like anything and everything that's related to this complaint. So with intellect, uh, when you see like a, a file fail, we don't have any limitations around it. So you can also, you know, upload, let's say if you want to upload like a, a YouTube video and a JPEG or a PDF document or a PowerPoint or a Microsoft Word, anything and everything you can think of, you can just dump all those files in here. Not a problem. Now it flows through, you know, some other information like the contact date, who was the primary contact, whether, you know, this complaint was received by an internal employee or via email or in person. So you can select all those options here. So for sake of, you know, uh, demo purposes, I'll go ahead and select employee and I'll say, okay, the complaint was reported by me. So it automatically populates my email address. Customer follow-up is a section where, you know, once the complaint is closed, do you want to notify customer on what were the findings? Did you do an investigation? Did you uh, confirm that the complaint was, uh, you know, alleged complaint? Is it really, uh, you know, the, the bad product out in the field? So let's say, yes, we want to notify customers. So I'll go ahead and select yes. And then it's gonna ask me like, who do you want to send this notification? So I will, you know, for again, sake for testing purposes, I'll select myself. And then in, in this case, uh, regulatory report, uh, you can have, you know, send these details to the regulatory um, agencies out there uh, by yourself, or, you know, maybe a customer has already reported so that, you know, you can document whatever information they provide to you. So let's say this is again test for now, because we don't want to include any information on this demo purposes. Let's say we issue them a hundred dollars reimbursement and the first preliminary action, again, you can see like I'm going, I'm following the page down. It's giving me a quick check. Like I have completed three sections out of total six. Now this first action due date is pretty much like, you know, what you did as soon as you heard about this product failure. So you can say, yes, you know, we issued a reimbursement and you can go ahead and add like, you know, reimbursement issued. Uh, any supporting documentation, maybe a receipt or maybe an email and the status would be, let's say, completed. You can create multiple actions 
uh, if you want, and then you can uh, do like, you know, save and close or save and new, even if you want, you can go ahead and delete the action. So I'll just go ahead and, you know, do save and close. Now I see my action is, my, you know, preliminary or actions is documented here. And now I'm, you know, going to select the product itself. So in this case, let's say it was a, a pump uh, which was leaking or any, you know, a, an elastic bandage was broken, something like that. And then you can have, you know, a lot number associated to it. If the samples are available, okay, how many quantity has been returned? What's the shipping service? What's the tracking number? All these details you can go ahead and document. So let's say first, uh, let's say here, 50 shipping services, DHL, one, two, three, ABC. Um, and then the next section is patient information. Now, depending on your company, you may or may not be uh, using this section. So we have you know, made it super easy for you. Under the settings tab, there's an option called as patient information required, yes and no. If it's selected as yes, it will always pop out here. If your companies you know, do not require to um, capture patient information, you can just go ahead and select the setting as no, and it will never show on the complaint form. So let's say for this purpose, it's not available, and then you go ahead and click the submit complaint. So once it's submitted, it pretty much goes to the next step, and let's take a quick look on the workflow. So whenever you see like a green um, trapezoid, it means it's the, the activity is completed. When it's in yellow, meaning it's in progress, and when it's white, meaning it's not started yet. So the, the way we have designed this complaints management is you first capture all the details, then a quality is pretty much going to do a quick review, like whether this is even a legit complaint. Is it a complaint itself? Sometimes, you know, people go ahead and create complaints, which sometimes may not be even relevant. So quality is going to, you know, do that check. If it's approved and an investigation is required, then the complaint investigation will kick in. Now, this complaint investigation is pretty much, you know, divided into three different steps. A DHR stands for device history record. So that's a DHR review. A sample evaluation, meaning once the product is coming back to your company, you will do a sample evaluation. So this is like a process review. This is a product review. And this is a quality review. Meaning here you will do your root cause analysis, risk analysis, and you will you know, make sure that the complaint is uh, either confirmed or not confirmed. So once that is done, let's actually stay, let's go back to determinations and I will show you how it works. So in determinations, now I'm not logging in, logging out and logging back in as a different people, but yes, in real world, you will do that. Since I'm a, I am have a full access to the system, it's just you know, coming back to me. Uh, you can see like all previous information is captured in tabs for determinations or for the quality person to review. And they will make a call like, yes, it's a valid complaint. Now, as soon as they make a call, yes, it's a valid complaint, they have to also decide whether this complaint is reportable. If it's, if it's having a high impact or a risk associated to the patient, then yes, you have to report this complaint. And the, you know, the reporting pretty much starts when the company is made aware of. So in this case, I was made aware of uh, today, which is June 26, so I have 30 days to actually report to the regulatory agency. So let's say, you know, no, it's not reportable. If this complaint is related to any suppliers, if you know, this particular product was uh, associated to any suppliers who was selling your product, so maybe you can select that, if it's unrelated, just you know, select unrelated and investigation is required or not required. Now, in certain cases, in certain instances, if there's an, uh, a relevant complaint already in the database, you don't really need another investigation. So you can just say not required and you can provide a rationale here. Uh, but let's say if an investigation is required, then you will of course go ahead and select, okay, who's gonna do the investigation? Who's gonna do process evaluation? Who's gonna do product evaluation? and who's gonna do quality invest, quality reviews. So all this, again, like I'm assigning it to myself because I don't want to log out and log back in. And once that is done, you go ahead and you know, approve the complaint and this meets uh, 21 CFR part 11 compliance. It's an e-signature. So what I'm doing here is I'm inputting my e-signature password, which automatically approves the complaint and then goes to the next step. Now, if we again look at the workflow, the intake was completed, determinations was completed, complaint investigation has triggered. Now, since I said the supplier issue was not related, meaning the product and process has been triggered. So I will go ahead and quickly complete the DHR review, meaning a process review, like let's say no, 
um, NCRs and CMRs were observed during production. Something along those lines, right? Uh, if you're doing a process review and then you go ahead and submit, the comp submit your DHR evaluation while another person is actually performing the product evaluation. In this case, it would be you know, a, a complaint investigation technician on a lab. And then you do your sample e evaluation, you know, <clears throat> a product evaluation, received quantity. Sometimes, you know, they say that they're gonna return 50 of them, but sometimes they only receive like 40 because, you know, they really didn't do a good job in packaging. So you can, you know, say how many quantities were received, sample evaluation, all products were tested and observed as licks. Something, like, something along those lines. Again, like, you know, this is just for testing uh, purposes and then you go ahead and submit your sample evaluation. Now what happens is once the DHR and both sample evaluation is completed, it starts the investigation phase. Now this investigation in a real world is pretty much, you know, performed by a quality engineer or sometimes a quality supervisor uh, or sustaining engineer. Now this person is gonna look at like what happened in previous activities, uh, an incident, uh, what was the product, you know, what was DHR and sample, what was documented, and they will do their assessment. And they will, you know, pretty much do a root cause analysis. Now, in this particular instance, in complaints investigation, uh, in complaint management, we are giving you a drop down here. Uh, this is like six M's. And you can select like, yes, it was like, a, let's say machines or something like, something along those lines. And root cause reasoning, you know, you defend your, uh, Analysis tracking and trending is like if you want to look at your, um, you know, previous complaints for a period of two years or two and a half years, and you want to see like how many complaints were received for this particular instance or this particular failed incident, you can go ahead and document those uh, comments here. And then once that is done, you will go ahead and you know do a quick risk analysis. Now while you are doing this, you are pretty much referring to your FMEAs or you are referring to your you know PHAs or risk management files associated to that specific product line. So in this particular case, I selected elastic bandages. You will of course look for all uh, the details for elastic bandages. So let's say you know it was minor inconvenience. It's unlikely to happen, and it's you know it's easy to detect. And system is going to do some mathematical calculation for you, and it's going to give you like a low risk. And then quickly you will, you know, justify uh, or give some comments, you know, what you did in risk analysis and then, you know, build a conclusion here, like the complaint was tested and confirmed, whatever you want to build like uh, as a conclusion for your follow-up. And since you have completed the investigation, you will make a call as whether this is confirmed, not confirmed, sometimes unable to evaluate, meaning, you know, products was not returned, product was not available, to ship, then of course you cannot make a decision whether the complaint was confirmed or not confirmed. But sometimes it's unknown, meaning you just don't know, like you know, what was the root cause, so you can select unknown. But let's say in this case, you know, it's confirmed. And this is what I was talking earlier, like you know, you can go ahead and escalate a complaint to a non-confirmance or a corrective action. Now this is pretty much like you know, building one to many or many to one relationship. So if you as a quality engineer has decided to actually escalate this complaint to a non-conformance, then you are pretty much, you know, making a call like whether you want to escalate to the existing non-conformance or do you want to create a brand new non-conformance? Now, you, you, let's say if you have an existing non-conformance in the system for associated problem, you can go ahead and select existing non-conformance and then you, you will be provided with a list of all the non-conformances from the system. And you can go ahead and select it. So for, let's say in this particular case, I'm gonna select, let's say NC170. You can also easily replace this with a corrective action, maybe a Kappa. If you don't want non-conformance, you can easily escalate it to Kappa directly. But uh, let's say do non-conformance 170. And any supporting you know, materials you wanna attach, you can do that here. So once the investigation is finished, I will go ahead and click the submit investigation which will of course go through quality for a review. So now if you look at the workflow again, let's go into the complaint investigation. DHR was finished, sample was finished, investigation was finished. Now it's in the approval phase. Now a team member, a quality member, sometimes maybe a manager, a director, a supervisor or a plant manager pretty much will review this complaint investigation and make a call 
like if this is enough to approve and close the complaint or you need another pair of investigations. So again, like in this case, I'll just go ahead and approve the investigation, which will go ahead and do a last item on the workflow, which is follow up because we said, yes, we want to do a follow up in the very first stage called as intake. Now, since the follow up is created, what I will do is I'll write a quick, nice email summary um, that will be you know, sent to the person who we selected in the very first step. And as soon as you know, I click the submit button, the complaint will be or close button, the complaint will be closed with along with an email notification sent to the person who selected who was selected here. So let's do that. Let's do close complaint. Uh, one thing I would like to, uh, you know, make a point here, each and every single activity has its own email notifications. So every single activity when it's triggered or it's overdue, um, you that particular owner of an activity owner will get an email notification. So out of the box, everything is already good to go. Now the complaint is closed. We can look at, you know, the, the overview tab. We can see like, you know, it's completed. Every section is pretty much completed here. This is also created as a printer friendly page. So you can pretty much take, you know, go to the, this option and, you know, print it in case you want to have a hard copies or, you know, you want to give it to uh, somebody in, in an email, which is not a part of a system. All right, so in this case, uh, let's stop here and <clears throat> go to the non-conformance app. And I mean, stop in the complaints management because since we escalated this complaint to, I think it was NC170, if I'm not mistaken. So let's do a quick search on NC170. <clears throat> there you go. And we got this as an internal non-conformance. And at the bottom of the screen, you will see associated complaints. So this is pretty much showing you, yes, a complaint was escalated to a non-conformance and you can have multiple complaints going into the same non-conformance. So this is how you create like one to many and many to one relationship. And if you click on it, everything is already copied over. So you don't need to worry about like, you know, you have to copy uh, some information from complaint management to non-conformance. No, you don't have to do that. It's a seamless integration within apps. Now let's take a quick look at the workflow. So in this particular case, this NC170 was uh, in the initiate non-conformance phase. So if we have to look at the non-conformance workflow, let's actually maximize our screen area so you can get a better look. All right. So in this particular case, what we are doing here is we are allowing you to capture any non-conformance that happens on a product, a process, or a system. So if you look at the very first step in a workflow, it's going to right out of the bat, it's going to ask you like, what's the problem type? Is it related to process, product, or a system? You know, you can select multiple and have just one non-conformance, or you can have just one each and create another non-conformance, depending on your SOPs. So in this case, let's say it was related to a product, then we will, you know, have a containment and a disposition workflow. Uh, and then for process and system, it will be like a quick correct to action. How can you stop this from happening? And you can also escalate it to correct to action or Kappa, meaning you can take preventive measures in order to avoid the recurrence. So let's do this in non-conformance. What we will do is we will quickly type in some comments here for complaint uh, 59 was escalated. Uh, the reason, you know, we are doing non-conformance, let's say, you know, want to perform thorough investigation. Let's say we found like another complaint, another 50 complaints um, over a period of one month. It's automatically defaulting the location to the user's location, which uh, in this case, it's my location based out in Los Angeles. You can go ahead and select a department. So I'm going to go ahead and select quality for now. And then you will go ahead and select who's going to perform the investigation. Now, these are all dependent drop downs. So if you select New York, then of course your departments would be different. If you select, uh, let's say if you select customer support, then of course your investigator drop down would be different. So depending on what previous drop down you have selected, the next drop down will automatically populate the relevant data. So let's do this. I'm going to do the investigation myself. Now, since I have selected process and system, let's just do process for now. 
uh, it's going to ask you which process failed. So let's say you know this particular process or sub process was failed. And again, you have to you can create additional information. Like <clears throat> if you want, you can go ahead and you know attach any assessments you did or attach any documents you were, you reviewed or management reviews or any anything that's related to supply. You can add all those values here. Let's for testing purposes, let's do one, two, three, one, two, three. You can create multiple, you can you know delete one of them. That's completely fine. And again, you want to take like quick preliminary action. So if you notice, you know, what's happening here is it the system is again asking you like what needs to be done right away. There's a problem out in a field. How do you tackle that problem? How do you combat that problem right away? So complaint was, you know, we issued a reimbursement in non-conformance, let's say all manufacturing processes uh, are under review, something like something along those lines are under review uh, for this product line. Uh, and then you can say the status is in progress because it's happening. You have, you're reviewing all the processes and you do save and close. And then you can go ahead and submit the non-conformance. So there you go. I mean, this was a good check. Uh, we have some controls in place. If you are not filling out the data, system is going to stop you to prevent um, going to the next step. So in this case, it let's say it was submit non-conformance. <clears throat> now the next step in a workflow is again investigation. Now you are doing a thorough investigation. That was the whole reason we escalated complaint 59 to non-conformance 170. Now in here, what we are doing is we are allowing you guys to actually perform a super thorough investigation um, as maybe a four step root cause analysis or five eyes or six M's or a fishbone diagram. And you can mul select multiple of them or you can just select one of them. That's come on your, on your uh, depending on your SOPs. So let's say, you know, we selected five eyes for now and we, you know, we do, we do like our normal investigation. So we will design our five eyes here and a quick summary uh, on your five eyes. And same thing, you want to do your risk analysis. Maybe the risk has changed over time. So you want to maybe uh, do another pair of risk analysis since it was already done in complaints. So let's say, you know, it's still uh, inconvenience, the minor inconvenience, but like it's moderate, the occurrence is moderate now. And the detectability has changed from, you know, easy to, easy to detect, which was in complaints to difficult to detect. Now, if you forget to click this button, system is automatically gonna do it for you. So there's another you know, pair of controls in place. So actually let's do that. I'm not gonna click this button for now. And then you can do you know, quick summary on your risk analysis. And at the very top, if you feel like you want to go ahead and escalate this non-conformance, again, you have option to either escalate to the existing correct to action or a brand new correct to action. Um, for sake of testing purposes, let's do this. I'm going to escalate it to, let's say number 60, right? And then I'm going to go ahead and submit the investigation or submit the root cause for a review because that's the standard procedure, right? Somebody, oh, there you go. Another check in place, like preliminary actions have not completed. So I took an action of, you know, manufacture, uh, review of manufacturing processes. So I need to first complete those action before the investigation can be closed. So all I have to do is go ahead and edit the table and change the status to completed. I will go ahead and you know update the text since it's completed and go ahead and click save. So there are certain controls in place which you know looks for certain fields. And then you go ahead and submit the correct action. It's saying a non-conformance is added to correct action 60, which is good. And now somebody is going to review your investigation, which is going to be of course quality group. Under review investigation, they will again do a quick analysis on uh, previous activities, like what happened, what was done, investigation. Okay, there was five eyes which was performed. The, the risk has changed a little bit. Uh, it was also escalated to correct to action 60. So you have full visibility from complaints, non-conformance, from non-conformance to Kappa. And it's like a hyperlink. So if, if I click on this link, it's gonna go back to the, the correct to action. And uh, since this is a non-conformance record, we have to take some actions. The correct actions needs to be taken in uh, the non-conformance as well. So I'm going to assign it to myself for again, sake of testing purposes. I'm going to 
approve the investigation. And then it goes into the action sub workflow where I will take multiple actions. So if you see like it's telling me take action and every time you see at the top is just a quick instruction for the user or for the owner of this particular activity. Again, this can be changed. This is what we created. This all can be changed under settings tab. And the settings tab is only accessible for designers and your system administrators. So your end user will never see, you know, what you uh, are writing as an instruction. Okay, so going back to the take action, let's say I have taken some actions. Um, uh, manufacturing documentation was updated. Uh, let's say manufacturing documentation was updated to other updated, that's fine. Again, uh, something along those lines. Uh, and then go ahead and submit the action. Each and every single action will be reviewed and approved by quality. Um, again, they need to sign off on all these actions because this is a change in a process and they need to be informed. So review action will be automatically triggered as soon as the submit action is completed. Um, and the quality can again make a call, like if they want to create additional Kappa and sometimes they want to do that and they can go ahead and you know, uh, assign it to someone else. But since we have already escalated to car 60, let's not do it in this one. And then you know, provide a quick summary of your investigation, uh, I mean your approval. If they, if they, so for example, let's say they reject this particular action, it just goes back to the previous activity until you know the quality signs off on the action. So it just goes into a you know infinite loop uh, if they are going to reject the action. And let's actually show a teeny tiny workflow. Let me quickly show you a workflow. So what happens? It takes action, review action. If it's not approved, it just goes back to take action. That's how easy it is. Oops, my bad. Let's go to review action. All right, I'm going to approve this action. And once the action is approved, let's look at the workflow, <clears throat> uh, the parent workflow of non-conformance. I initiated a non-conformance. I performed my investigation here. I, somebody reviewed my investigation. I took actions and my non-conformance is closed. But since we have escalated this non-conformance to a Kappa, let's look at the Kappa record. So let's look at, I think it was car 60. So let's do a quick search for corrective action car number 60. Okay, there you go. And if we look again, like scrolling all the way to the bottom, you see associated non-conformances. There you go, NC170. So this is how you know a seamless integration works. So we actually started with complaints management. We created complaint number 59. We escalated to not, not NC 170. And this was further escalated to Kappa, which is car 60. And you have full visibility across each and every single app here. Just go ahead and click on that particular link and it's gonna open non-conformance record for you. You can look at the workflow, who completed, when completed, everything is documented and you have full uh, traceability on that particular instance. So let's go quickly to car 60. The way we have designed the Kappa app is to pretty much, you know, um, follow the 8D methodology. So if you look at this overview tab, you see D1, D2, D3 uh, till D8. This is the methodology used in a quality world. So what we have done is we Im implemented those that methodology while we were designing a Kappa. Uh, these all tabs again are all page, you know, printer friendly. As soon as you complete all these activities, this information will be filled in and then you can go ahead and print it to PDF or Excel or, you know, just print it to the browser. The biggest change from a non-conformance to uh, the corrective action is in investigation, you are pretty much defining a corrective action plan. So in, in terms of non-conformance, what we did was we did an investigation analysis or root cause analysis, which was, you know, five eyes. In here, you can again do the five eyes or you can, you know, have multiple of them. But if you look at down a little bit down below, you see a corrective actions plan. And now this is the difference between a non-conformance app and a Kappa app. In Kappa, you're defining a plan. You're also verifying those actions. In non-conformance, you are just taking action, somebody's reviewing and then you're closing the record. So in this case, actually, let's do this. Let's go ahead and create an action plan. So let's say I'm going to do, uh, 
I don't know, maybe a test method validation and who's going to do it. You can have multiple owners to the same action or you can have multiple actions itself either way. So again, sake of testing purposes, I'm just assigning it to myself. You can select specific due dates for each action. If the due date is been passed, let's say, you know, if it's passed July 3rd, system is going to send an email notification to the action owner saying that your activity is already overdue. So you have full, full blown automated email notifications right out of the box. Go ahead and save the table. And since you, are, you have defined the correct action plan, you also need to verify if those actions were effective. So how would you verify it? Like you will have you know, a couple of items here. Maybe you wanna do a control chart or maybe you wanna do a trend analysis and you will verify your actions uh, if they were effective or not. Uh, one thing again, I would want to reiterate here, all these values, which I just selected like test method validation or effectiveness of training, everything is changeable. This is all coming from the settings tab. You can just go ahead and replace all these values, not a problem. All right, so let's do like, you know, quick summary here, here, here. All these required fields needs to be completed before it moves to the next step. All right, so looks like the investigation has been completed. Somebody is going to again review. In terms of Kappa, you have a Kappa review board and that's what CRB stands for. So it's a predefined approver depending on your location and depending on your department. So again, this all signature metrics can be defined one time in the system. You just train the system one time and system will automatically assign the right approvers uh, for, your, for your Kappa records. So in this case, it actually, uh, under settings type, it was me who was assigned as a CRB review. So I'll go ahead and approve this investigation. And once it's approved, it actually goes to implementing the actions. So remember when we you know, created a correct action plan in an investigation phase, which was this, now I'm going to start you know, implementing those actions. And you can you know, go ahead and do all those actions, taken, submit action, each and every single action again will be reviewed and approved by quality. So let's quickly approve the action for now. Now, if we look at the workflow and I want to show you one quick good thing here is since you created this Kappa, you have full visibility on what's happening on your actions. So in this particular case, we created two actions. One is still pending, like <clears throat> this action is still pending and the one was completed, was moved from pending to completed. And <clears throat> excuse me, and that's the whole reason, you know, this particular action implementation is still in yellow. So what we will do is we'll go ahead and complete that action. Also, you can see these actions under your personal navigation right here. Either way, you can go ahead and you know open from here. Actually, let's use personal navigation. So this is what actions implementations. So implement actions would be here. Now this is immediate actions, monitor actions. Did I send it to myself or no? Actually I did. There you go, implement action. And I will go, go ahead and you know again, add some comments, submit action, do a quick review of the actions taken by quality, any notes that they want to punch in here and then approve the action. Once these actions are approved, you will notice the entire Kappa status is saying closed and pending effectiveness check because we don't want to clutter um, in the you know corrective action activities because you know when you have an auditor in your company and they're asking you okay show me your um, closed kappas and that includes the kappas which just you know pending effective or sometimes you know they just want to see like you know what's open and you, you don't want to show them like you know it's pending effective either way um, now this particular person can do an effectiveness verification and I mean, it, I assigned it to myself. Um, 
It could be a 30 day effectiveness verification or a 60 days or a 90 days, depending on your SOP. So as long as you want to keep it open, you can just go ahead and change the due dates for this particular activity. Uh, this is again, all dynamic. So it depends on the, the record itself and it's not like a global uh, implementation or global due date for all the activities. Uh, also, you are you know making a call here. If it's the correct action was effective, all good, fine. If it's not effective, system is automatically going to create another corrective action. And in terms of like, let's say a preventive action was re needed, so you can go ahead and select yes, and you can assign it to someone who's going to do the preventive actions. Meaning, how can you really prevent these leaks from happening? How to prevent the recurrence of this particular problem? Uh, this could be you know like you know, doing frequent trainings, changing the suppliers, changing, you know, processes, all those different terms, um, you know, comes into picture. So a new corrective action car 67 is created and assigned to the previous owner because I think I selected car was not effective. So if you look at the workflow, effectiveness verification was completed, effective was no. That's why, you know, this box turned green. And the last step in a workflow is a Kappa closure, which is the last dimension of 8d methodology now system is smart enough it's pretty much capturing you know all different people who took part in the kappa and it's dumping all those users in a table here so once you write an, a good email subject a good email message and close this record it's going to send an email uh, to all the people who are who were involved in the in this particular kappa so the the logic behind this kappa closure activity is just recognizing their efforts in create in you know in doing the investigation and closing um, the kappa record so i will go ahead and you know do notify team and close and i will get a pop up message saying the kappa is closed now if you look at you know the car 60 it says closed everything will be already filled in so let's say implementing actions yes the actions were taken identify root cause yes root cause was identified we used 6 ms uh, i mean we didn't create complete all the fields but this will be all legit. <clears throat> Actions were taken. Uh, team recognition, this was the team. I sent this particular email. And any Kappa comments, no. Associated complaints, no, because we actually escalated a complaint to a non-conformance and non-conformance to a Kappa. If we would have selected Kappa directly on the complaints, then this table would have filled in. And then associated non-conformances, and then that's it. <clears throat> So as you saw, we started from complaints management. We initiated complaint 59 for a, a broken or a, a, you know, a leak on an IV bag. We escalated to a non-conformance. We did a thorough investigation here. We did five eyes. We implemented a few corrective actions. Like you know, manufacturing process documents were reviewed and updated. And then we further escalated to a CAPA to CAR 60, where we did a very thorough investigation and we defined a corrective action plan to make sure this is not going to happen again, to prevent it from happening. And that's how it flows from one app to another app. Now, besides complaint, non-conformance and Kappa, there are certain apps actually which talks to each other. For example, you know, a calibration app, a failed calibration or a failed maintenance talks to non-conformance, a failed valid validation talks to non-conformance. If you're validating something, and you want to deviate from a process, it talks to deviation management. Audit, a failed audit talks to a non-conformance app. A failed change process or an engineering change request again talks to non-conformance. Supplier management also is connected to non-conformance. Document control is connected to employer training. So, you know, the, the list just goes on. Uh, I mean, long story short, what we have done here is we have created one system which would meet all the requirements or all the aspects or attributes <clears throat> of quality. So for example, if you have to create something in document control and that's like a change in a process, you will end up you know, going to the change management and complete that activity. So it's like a closed loop process. And that's, uh, that's pretty much it on uh, QMS 4.0 database. I mean, we can take time uh, and discuss about other apps. Um, they are pretty standard. Again, the layout would be still same. Document control, it has its own workflow. Employer training has its own workflow. Supplier management, deviation management, each and every single app has its own workflow. Um, all the email notifications are already activated on each and every single app. They talk to uh, some other apps. If you want to share some information from one app to another app, 
you have full visibility across all the apps as a designer and an administrator also as a end user if you want to quickly look at like what's happening on the particular processes you still have full visibility on the reports <clears throat> and you can you know again you can do quick searches on any app under settings tab an administrator can make some decisions uh, that can be you know globally deployed on that particular process and this is how you know the qms4.0 database or qms4.0 product works great so thank you yep. uh, tejas this is uh, really fantastic i think this use case really kind of brought it to life and it's such a relatable story so um you know that was fantastic um and yeah you know we could talk about some of the other apps i mean some of these like document control and employee training are also very critical and, and robust um but at this point i think you know we should probably leave that to a, a separate uh, uh video um instead you know maybe what we can do is talk a little bit about um, you know, the configurability that we offer. So, and I'll just make a couple quick comments here um, before turning it back to you, Tejas. So, just so everyone knows, so again, all of these apps were created on our no-code platform. And uh, in fact, Tejas is not a software programmer and he was, he was very involved in, in building these. Um, and he can speak to that um, in just a moment. So, really, it, it speaks to the fact that it, it is a no-code platform. And so that means that you can, you can modify these apps. So, if you saw something where it looked, you know, uh, a little different from what you uh, have created in your own business or you have your own business requirements, that's great. That's what Inflex is built for is you can modify these applications again with no uh, programming required. Uh, and then more than that, you can also build new applications. So if there's a uh, an, another area of your business, um, whether it's quality or even a different department, uh, if there's another area that needs to be uh, digitized and automated, then you can still leverage the uh, in select no code platform to do that. So just as an example, so some of our customers have created a, a contract management app, for example, uh, invoice and CapEx automation, uh, mobile field services, safety observations and accident reporting, uh, inventory management, uh, asset uh, tracking is a big one, work order management, and really much more. So there's a lot you can do uh, with Intellect and there are, there are many, many other uh, features uh, that uh, come with the platform and, and really kind of empowers the user to innovate. Uh, so, and then, you know, that's really important today as business requirements are changing, you know, uh, especially uh, today as, as uh, uh, you know, people may need to bring on new suppliers and change, you know, their supplier onboarding process or uh, trying to um, provide a, a virtual auditing solution given that everyone is, you know, many people are working from home. So with Intellect, you can really, um, uh, you know, you're in control. You can, you can really um, modify these applications or build new applications to uh, really set your company up for success. So it's all about uh, helping you to digitize and automate your, uh, your business processes. So um, with that, you know, so again, a lot of companies talk about uh, configurability and at Intellect, we really like to say it's, uh, we offer extreme configurability. And so maybe the best way to really explain what that means is to, to show you. So uh, Tejas, would you mind um, kind of just showing us uh, how to build a business application? Yeah, totally. So let's do that. Um, and you know, that's, that's a great and valid point, Peter. I just want to you know, um, reiterate on extreme configurability. So just a quick background. I'm a MS in biomedical engineer. I'm a master's of biomedical engineering. I don't come from a software world. I have zero experience in development or in coding, but I created these apps and this is so easy to use, so intuitive to create. Um, it's a quick three-step process to create business apps. So for example, let's say you wanna create, uh, actually let's do that. So what you need to do is you, you will be of course getting a site where you have a full privilege of creating those apps, right? So you, all you have to do is just turn on the design mode and uh, actually let's do this. If you are already in a use mode and you right click somewhere, you are pretty much getting properties of that browser. Now this is a Google Chrome, so I'm getting properties of Google Chrome. As soon as you switch to the design mode and start right clicking, it starts giving you properties of intellect. And this is how you start changing the apps or this is how you start designing inside intellect. So the best and the easiest way to create an app, and this is just the logic, you can make app as simple as you want or as complex as you want by creating templates. So what you need to do is this 
designer control panel and administrator actually comes out of the box. It's the system, it's the platform. So you go into a designer control panel and this is something like, you know, Microsoft Paint where you start designing something or Microsoft Visio where you start designing workflows. So what I will do is I will go to templates and I will go ahead and create a new template. Let's say I'm going to create, um, let's say demo template, something, something along those lines. Right. It's taking a little bit longer and then uh, it will automatically add at the bottom. So let's say this is a, a demo slash test template. Now, once you create this template, what it really asks you for is pretty much start adding the metadata, the fields. And this is how you do it. Like click on insert item and you have a bunch of different fields, like from a text field to a number to a, a date. And you know, you have so many different fields. So, you know, for sake of testing purposes, I'm just going to have like maybe five, maximum five. I don't even need five, but just, you know, for testing purposes. Uh, and then this, you know, this is, this fields are created and this is exactly what we have done on complaints, non-conformance and Kappa. When you saw like five Y's, six M's, root cause analysis, these were the fields we created. And at the bottom, you will see something called as a macro button, which, you know, I remember when, when I click close or submit or next step, this is what we created, like, you know, move to the next step in a workflow. Now, once you have created a template, all you have to do is just turn on the workflow. So you go to the properties and you go to advanced and you turn on the workflow for this particular template. And this is how we did it for complaints app or all the other apps. We just turn on the workflow. And once you have turned on the workflow, depending on your process, what you have deployed in your company, you start designing the workflow. So I'll show you in a minute, just this is done. So behind the scenes, what it's doing, it's pretty much creating that code, that specific code inside the database. But on the user side, you're not even seeing the code. All you're doing is just drag and drop here. Uh, and then if you go to the workflow, now since the workflow is created, currently it's empty. Of course, it's the, um, the first step is like designing a workflow. So all you have to do is just simply drag and drop. So let's say this is, uh, let's make it so easier. Let's say this is step one, and then we'll add like another one, like step two, something. Step one. Okay, so I'm literally dragging and dropping all these activities here. So let's do here another one. Step two. Okay. And then all you have to do is just start connecting the dots. And this is how you can, you know, create your own workflows or automate your processes. Now, again, you can keep it as simple as you want. You can make it as complex as you want, depending on your SOPs, depending on your processes. Uh, this is a teeny tiny workflow. And once you know you have created multiple activities, all you have to do is just start dumping the data, start dumping the metadata, which you already created on over. You don't have to redo it. So what we have done is we allow you to link the items. So let's say I'm going to select all of them uh, but yeah, in the very first activity, I don't want, you know, checkbox and a radio button. Fine. Let's uncheck it. And then, uh, on the step one, I only have three fields on the step two. I have, you know, the first three fields plus the next two fields, which the same process, but let's say the first three fields are non editable because it's coming from the previous activity. So all you can do is I'm literally holding control and selecting all of them and just right click and do the conditions called as non-editable so in the next activity the previous three fields are non-editable and this is how you do it now once you have created the workflow the second step in designing an app is create a table out of it so let's say if we want to add an app right here all i have to do is just click on add app i'm going to ask you for a name so let's say this is demo and test uh, this is my color let's say i want to go with black not a good color, but I like black and white. So at the bottom, you see like demo test, all good here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a table. You want to have a table where your instances or your records will be saved. So since you have already created an app, uh, a template, all you have to do is go again, like go to insert item and insert a table right here. Once now in intellect, you have two different types of table, one is inserting into a table and one is 
just reviewing what's inside the table. So meaning the reporting table. So in this case, we want to make it as a data entry table. So let's do data entry table for now, meaning we are allowing your end users to create instances. And I'm gonna click done. That's it. Now you can make your app a pretty fancier. Maybe you wanna have like, you know, a create new something like a button which we do, right? Uh, on the all apps. So let's do this, create new. Okay, let's even move it to the very first step here. Okay, too fast. All right, and then here, what we need to do is we need to give them a button where they can insert into the table, right? So what we will do is we will do a, a new entry button and then the demo and test, okay? Create new demo and test. That's a button for them. And then just link that button to the table you created under the home tab. And that's it. Once that is done, your app is created. So I'll show you just in a minute and click okay. And that's it. So if I have to log out, let's say I'm a, a regular end user, I log in. I see a brand new app, a demo and test, go, all good. I click on the button. There you go. It starts asking you for the data now. Now you can also make it a little bit fancier since this opened as a, a pop up page. You can also create, not make it as a pop-up page, just going into the button itself and do a main content page, which we saw in the complaints, right? When we created new complaint, it opened a page. So this is exactly what I'm doing. Like click on the button, it's gonna open a page for you, add some data, click the next step. Step one was completed, it came to step two. If you look at the workflow, step one was completed. Let's look at step two. All these three fields are non-editable because it's coming from the previous activity. Now let's do step two was completed and then the next step. And that's it. Your workflow is completed. Your app was designed, your records are created and now you can you know, make your quality um, or business apps. And if you look at the table, here you go. The table has one instance now. And of course you can have thousands and thousands and millions of instances in like in terms of documents, uh, complaints, non-conformances. And this is how you do it. This is how you create apps. And this is how actually we created apps. No, this is awesome. Uh, thank you, Tejas. I mean, really it does uh, give you a good idea as to how uh, quickly you can build business applications. Um, and you know, this is exactly why Gartner uh, says that Intellect is by far the easiest to use and, and really the most um, uh, configurable QMS solution out there in the market. So. Um, it's, uh, I think, a great way to, um, to go for someone who has a need to, um, you know, really do things the way they want to do things. So um, thank you, Tejas. This, uh, this is great. Yep. Um, all right. Well, and, you know, I, I, I'd also like to add that uh, we also offer mobile capabilities. So if you're uh, in need of a mobile application, you can deploy these applications as a mobile app as well. Um, you would basically access a uh, Intellect container app uh, up on the App Store or Google Play Store, and then you would be able to access the uh, applications that uh, you have, whether it's uh, any one of these uh, from our QMS suite or uh, any apps that you may have built uh, on your own or using our PS team, our professional services team. So uh, the point is that you know, you're in control of uh, how you want to put this information in, in your users' hands. And uh, in fact, with the mobile apps, you can even have your own custom branded container app as well. So that way your users are not going to the Intellect app, but they're going to your custom branded mobile app on the Google Play Store or App Store. So there's really a lot you can do with Intellect. And um, uh, I just would like to thank Pages for walking us through um, Intellect QMS 4.0 and uh, building a, a very fast app here. So um, excellent. And thank you, Pages. Um, yep. I guess before we wrap, though, I did want to ask uh, one thing. So, Tejas, any is there anything else that you'd like to add before um, before we do um, wrap up this video? Yeah, I mean, um, so just to conclude, you know, with QMS 4.0, uh, again, you saw so many things like you know, seamless integrations, creating a brand new app. Um, it's just you know easy to implement a software and make sure you know you're, you're delivering you know quality products and quality services uh, and processes to your customers, right? So 
of course, many of you guys already know that FDA is already pushing a lot of regulated companies to onboard a software and go away from pen and paper based system, or at least have something as a hybrid solution. So in a longer run, of course, you know, technology is going to help each and every one of us. So why not leverage it? So this software, again, like you saw, you have full visibility, traceability, all email notifications and all those things. So it's just easier to manage and to design your processes um, in a software world compared to what you can do on a pen and paper. And that's pretty much it. Excellent. Yeah, I know. I couldn't agree more. And, uh, and one more thing to note, actually, is that we do have a setup app. It's a, a new app that came out with QMS 4.0. And uh, this is designed to help uh, accelerate the onboarding of, uh, of Intellect for any new customers. So um, when you're ready, you know, we'd love to show you uh, how that works and, and to talk to you about how quickly Intellect can be up and running um, and, uh, and have you uh, doing smarter quality with Intellect. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Well, excellent. Well, uh, thank you everyone for watching our video and uh, you can contact us anytime to learn more. Uh, so we look forward to speaking with you. Thanks again and goodbye. Very cool. Thank you, everyone. Bye.